Bye, my cats. Charge. Hi guys, my name is Marlene McCohen and welcome to Parent Tip Tuesday. Uh, for those of you guys who follow my videos, you know that this is Vinny. I'm gonna give him that to keep him busy. And this is Picasso. Picasso! Just in case this is a long video, they might be interested in playing with these things. If you follow me regularly, you probably saw that I just put up a story time Sunday. Sunday? It's Tuesday. I know. I had something planned for story time Sunday on Sunday, but then the drama of Sunday created its own story time Sunday, which also led to the delivery of that story on Tuesday. But I didn't want you guys to not have a video because um, story time Sunday is kind of like my favorite video day and I'm sure it probably is yours. It gave me a great idea for Parent Tip Tuesday. So this video goes hand in hand with the story of story time Sunday. So for those of you guys watching this, maybe you want to watch that before or maybe you just want to learn this information because it's very, very important. But long story short, Rocky flew away on Sunday and I wasn't even in town and so that is the story of that in case you guys want to watch what happened. I hope you're watching this video um, now before something happens to your bird because you want to have this information ingrained in you and know what to do real quick in a situation, right? And I want you to watch this video completely throughout, no matter what, because it's so good to be prepared and you'll be thankful that you are prepared in these situations. If you're just losing a bird right now and you're watching this video, I can't guarantee that this video is gonna be fast enough for you because I wanna lay down all the important facts as clearly as I can, but I will try to write as much as I can in the description. First, let's talk about if you lose your bird, but he is in flight, meaning you watched him fly away from you. Whatever happened, happened. He got scared. He's flying away right now. You can see him. What do you do? The first thing is do not panic and try to run to where he is because you may lose sight of him. If I were you, I would keep my eye on him until you imagine that he lands or Sometimes there's bushes in the way and that's why I say that. So if you start running, you might forget the direction in which he landed because you can't see anything. Best to stay where you are until you gauge exactly which direction he went and then run off into that direction as soon as you have no more chance of seeing him anymore. Meaning, let's say there's a bush blocking his flight and now you can't see him anymore. Sure, run to that direction. But make sure you don't just run aimlessly without seeing where he is going because sometimes you'll go, shit, I should have stopped and looked. Instead, I just panicked and screamed for someone else to come. So that is the first thing. Second, while he's flying, if he's a flight trained parrot, and believe me, even flight trained parrots can get lost because situations happen, call out to him. For example, Picasso is really good at coming to me when I call him. I've taught him to fly to me when he wants a treat and things like that. So if I was to yell, Picasso here, and he was in the middle of flying, he may possibly do a curve back and land on me, but that is not guaranteed. So just try that while your bird is flying. He may just think, oh, maybe this is another flight training that's happening in the house. And since you didn't panic and you called him, maybe he will come to you. Note the direction of where he's going and how high he was flying. Because if you can gauge, what's the matter, Vinny? If you can gauge how high he is, maybe you could tell if he's gonna land soon. So when you get to that area, you know if he should have landed by then, if he's tired, if he usually doesn't fly that far. Note all of that information. It's really important. Vinny's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let's say you do not see your bird for whatever reason, maybe you didn't even see him fly away, but you know that he's gone and you need to find him. Well, I would call every single person that you know. You gotta spread out and check everywhere that you can. Trees and sometimes under bushes. Sometimes birds land and then they go hide under things. So it's really important to check just as much high as it is low. That's uh, one thing I want you guys to note, okay? And then, okay, it's okay. 
Remember this, a bird, when he first flies away, tends to stay within one mile radius because that's how far they will go just for like the first day or the first week. They usually won't go farther than that. So first thing you do is you get a group of people, you spread out, you call the bird. Now, if you haven't lost a bird yet and you're watching this video, um, it would be really good to train your bird something that they respond to. One time we lost a conure that was trained to respond when we would go like this and he would scream. And the great thing about that is that he was so green. There's no way we would have found him in those tall trees, but we did because when we did that noise, he would scream and he was accustomed to it. So if there's something that your bird will respond to, think quickly what it is that they like to respond to and do that noise as much as you can. With that being said, have you ever played a video of your bird for your bird? It's a really good idea to have your bird calling on, his, on your phone, like a recording of it. When I play back a video for Cody or Vinny, um, it's almost like they know what they're gonna say next in the video and they start responding to it. So it would be great if you have that with you always on your phone so that while you're looking for your bird, you can play that noise and see if he responds to it like he does in the house. Now, um, remember guys, birds tend to be one person birds. So if there is somebody that your bird loves in the family, it's a great idea to get that person on board right away looking for your parrot. Same thing with if your bird likes um, another bird, then cage that bird up and bring him with you on the search. So for example, if God forbid Picasso was lost, I would bring Jersey because Picasso loves Jersey and loves to chase Jersey around, especially during certain seasons. So I know that if he saw Jersey, uh, he'd be much more likely to come down. Let me tell you guys what's going on right now. I wrote myself a note of a list to not forget anything and Vinny is seeing it and he just wants to chew up the paper. So go ahead, chew that up. That's what he wants right now. So anyway guys, so you wanna bring that bird with you or that person with you. Now, <laughs> remember, when you're looking for your bird, the goal is to find him before the sun goes down. When the sun goes down, your bird is gonna nest wherever he is and he's not gonna move for the night. However, before the sun goes down, he might take one last flight, which might be a great chance for you to get him. If you've located your bird and you do see him and you know where he is and it's nighttime and you have not gotten him down yet, then this might be a good time to call him and really make an effort to let him know that you're there. Now, sometimes when parrots see you, they get calm again. You know how it is, guys. When you're in the house and the bird sees you, he's calm. When he doesn't see you, he freaks out. It might be a good time to kind of hide where you still have your eye on him, but he doesn't have his eye on you. So you hide and if he gets frantic, he might be more motivated to come down and try to find you. If you're the bird's favorite person, you want everyone else to stay a little bit clear of you because sometimes birds won't approach crowds. But know your bird, know how he is. Another thing is, if you see your bird, uh, it might be tempting to get a ladder to, you know, climb up and get your bird down, but a ladder may scare your bird. Be very, very aware. It might be safer to climb yourself up a little bit distance or hide the ladder so that he doesn't feel like this ladder is suddenly coming to him and he flies. Because remember guys, there's no guarantee that he'll fly down. And also, birds tend to fly up, so it might be scary for birds to fly down. So you have to really be like a MacGyver in knowing your bird and knowing how to get a hold of him once you have him. What are you doing? So once you have sight of him, you wanna make sure that you don't lose your chances of keeping him in sight by putting anything scary there. There may be, let's say, uh, we do this with Ty sometimes. Sometimes Ty can be in an aggressive mode that is our lesser sulfur crested cockatoo. And um, 
he gets kind of angry at my mom just because and he gets really territorial over certain areas like my my brother's bed and my brother and his girl's bed so when Ty is in there and my mom wants to get him off she shows him a broom and he just steps up onto the broom the broom is great because it keeps him at a distance and it reaches further but it doesn't scare Ty. If your bird is not scared of something like that, then you may be able to use something like that to get your bird down. But if he is scared of it, you remember, you want to be very, very careful, okay? So make sure that you are aware of what scares him and what doesn't and be gentle because you do not want him to fly again. Now, guys, very, very important. If you haven't located the bird yet and you know that he probably can't fly too far, but he probably landed somewhere like on a street or in a backyard, which is in most cases, if you don't have an extremely flighted bird, they can only fly so far and then they land. You wanna knock on every single door, ask to get in the backyards, let everybody become aware. Now, I don't mean just the houses next to you. I mean the houses in front of you, behind you, and even in front of that. Because what I forgot to tell you guys in the Storytime Sunday story is that it wasn't the houses behind us, it was the houses on the street in front of the houses behind us that he was found in. So had we knocked on every single door right away, eventually they would have been like, yeah, I have a bird. So don't be afraid to go to like these 10 houses on the block, the 10 houses across from that, the 10 houses behind that, and the 10 houses in front of that, because you just never ever know. The chances are most likely that somebody found your parrot and you are looking to find that person that found your bird. Most of the time, that is the situation or the person where the bird is in their backyard. So do not be shy, do not be afraid. The first thing you do with that big search is you call people to come help you, anybody that's in the house, anybody that's your neighbor, you knock on all of the doors and you find out if anybody has seen any bird flying or anything suspicious, okay? Oh, if you see your bird and it's sundown and he's begun to nest and you still can't get to him, make sure you come back early in the morning, the next morning, because he probably will not move and you're the first thing that he sees because he might then be motivated to fly, he might be tired, he might be hungry, he might be ready to come down. With that being said, another way to try to get your bird down is to bribe him with whatever it is that he likes to eat along with his friend's bird. So I should have said that before earlier, but if you've located your bird, bring his bird friend, his human friend, um, and something that he likes to eat. We have a tree that Jersey likes to play in, and when she gets too high, I bring something that sounds like chocolate, but it's not, and I like open the wrapper, and she comes like right down really, really quickly because she wants to see what it is, and then I grab her. If I didn't bring her anything, she wouldn't be interested in coming down. So that's what I do if anything like that happens where she's not too far, I know that she's safe, but she climbed herself a little bit too high. Then you can do that with the bird, whether it's inside the house or outside the house. So now, we've covered what to do if you see your bird. Now, if you see your bird and he's sleeping the night, make sure you are there the first thing in the morning. I'd probably like camp out, but like if you can't do that, like make sure you are the first thing in the morning. Remember, he's probably very tired. He's probably very hungry. So it might be wise to bring a cage too for him to step down on. Um, a lot of people have had luck with bringing the bird's cage out too, just because he might feel safe. So I would go to sleep. If you think he's in your trees in your backyard, I would leave a cage um, somewhere where he can see it because he might be like, oh, that's my bed, so time to go to bed. And then just keep your eye out in case, you know, he gets in there because you want to obviously catch him, but most likely he's not going to move, right? Now, I would always have one person um, designated to do the online thing right away. Writing that Craigslist ad, um, going on the Nextdoor app, which is an amazing app. It's for if your neighbors 
uh, spotted something or their neighborhood watch basically but it has been very very helpful in finding parrots if they found a parrot or you lost a parrot then normally somebody will be like oh my god this has got to be my neighbors where do I go and a lot of people will think of next door if you haven't found your bird yet and it's been already a day another great thing is Parrots 911. They are an amazing community. I think they're volunteers. I don't know so much about them, but I do know that they are incredible. What they do is they look for lost ads and they look for found ads and they put them together in case you didn't know of all the other places to look and they call you and they'll say, hey, I found a mustache parakeet. Is he yours? It's how I found um, Picasso. Um, he was at he was at a uh, shelter and he had been there for a really long time and I was looking for my mustache parakeet that I lost and they found him. So uh, when no one came for him later and they knew that I had experience with these kind of birds, they called me and they said, can he have a home with you before Christmas? So I took him home. Ah, oh, that's my eyelash. So um, that's a really, really good group, Parrots 911. If you can contact them, I would. They work tirelessly to get birds back to their owners. If it's been 24 hours, you wanna make sure you have done all of the above. And that is, of course, you wanna make sure that you have put it up on Craigslist with some pictures of the bird. You wanna make sure that you've contacted all of your neighbors, as many as you can. You want to make sure you have contacted the Neighborhood Watch or the Next Door app. Um, the previous area that I lived in had an excellent Neighborhood Watch. Um, I swear this lady got every single person that was in the neighborhood on the email. Like as soon as we moved in, she was like, hi, I'm the Neighborhood Watch. Do you want to be on the email list? And I don't know if I said this earlier, but um once you are on that and you post that you're looking for your bird they will always know that you're the girl with the bird or the guy with the bird and if they ever find a bird you will be the first person that they contact so that's always good to know so we have craigslist we have neighborhood watch of course the parrots 911 that i spoke to you guys about um quite often they'll actually find you if you put an ad on craigslist they're that good um, and then if it's been past 24 hours, you definitely want to go to all of the local vets, leave a flyer, let them know you're looking for your bird, make sure you call them, even the local pet stores. Uh, one time I lost a cockatiel and I was so devastated and the next day my dad came home with my bird and he had found it at the pet store and they said, how can you prove that this bird is yours? And my dad said, because there's lipstick all over him. And uh, that was true because I was like kissing him all the time. And um, if you have any local zoos, you wanna check with them, you wanna contact the police, radio stations, animal shelters, the SPCA, uh, lots of people will be willing to help. Um, I know a story of a lady in Los Angeles that she lost her African gray and she made billboards, like huge billboards everywhere in Los Angeles. And I guess it had been quite a while, but after some time, the bird was returned to her. And not only was he returned to her, she was so excited. Then she put more billboards everywhere else in LA saying, thank you, Los Angeles. So you just never know. I think it had been months and months before she got her bird back, but she got him back. So it just goes to show that you never ever want to give up. And also when people find parrots, it's usually gonna be a person that finds the parrot and they're gonna take it to the nearest place that they think of if they haven't thought of online. So that's why you check the pet stores and the zoos and the vets and stuff like that because that's where people often go. Uh, just think about what you might do in that situation and what is around you. So let's do a recap because sometimes I get excited and all my information can be all over the place. I try to make it as organized as possible, but let's, let's, let's just, just do this real quick. So first of all, if you see your bird and he is in sight, the first thing you wanna do is call him, keep an eye on him, make sure that you know the distance that he went, engage where he's going to land, and then go directly to your bird. If you see him and he's high up, you don't wanna scare him. 
You again want to call him. You might want to try bringing his best bird friend in a cage. You may want to bring his best human friend definitely for him to come down to. You may want to bring a video of him talking if you don't see him so that you can hear where he is. And um, you may also want to have his cage handy in case he wants to fly to his cage, whether it be now or at night. The goal is to find your bird before dark. If you have located him before dark, but you don't, weren't able to get him down, you wanna be there first thing in the morning. Um, just check, make sure the sun went completely down because he might do one last flight before he goes out. Most of the time, uh, most of you probably have birds that are not as flighted. See how he just kind of flew down? That's most of the time <laughs> what they're gonna do. Vinny, what's it? Are you gonna turn off the video? Come over here and I'll put you in the video. Um, so uh, you don't wanna scare your bird with a ladder. Come prepared to know what it is that won't scare him. Maybe hide the ladder, climb up, whatever it is that you can do. Make sure you have other people there helping you in case you need to catch him. Uh, you could bring food as a bribe along with the bird and his favorite person. And uh, you can also try hiding. If he sees you, he might feel content, too content to let you know where he is or too content to come down to you because he's like, oh, my buddies are here and I love being in the street. Hide, see if he panics, keep your eye on him, and then maybe then he'll be more apt to come down to you. Um, do not leave until the sun sets. Be there first thing in the morning. And then we always have Craigslist, next door, Parrots 911, vet, zoo, animal shelter, pet shops, ads, radio stations, uh, SPCA, whatever it is that you can do. And remember, most likely you're finding the person that found your bird because nine times out of 10, your bird is going to go to another human. And um, the worst case scenario, usually, I'm not saying bad things don't happen. There are hawks and raccoons and all that, but I don't wanna scare you guys with that now. But um, usually the worst thing that happens is, which I hear happen all the time, is someone found the bird and fell in love with the bird and made him theirs. So that's why you wanna put ads out too on every single poll because one person can't keep a bird without another person knowing about it. So even if that person wants to keep their bird, then, um, then or keep your bird, then maybe someone else who saw the ad will be like, wait a minute, I know where that bird is from. And real quick guys, let me tell you a story of uh, my friend who found a dog. My friend found a dog that went missing and he put a picture of him and the dog up on Instagram and he tried to find the owner and he couldn't find the owner anywhere and he put up notes and called people. And then I got motivated so I just took like the picture of him on Instagram and looked and went to Craigslist myself and went through every single dog ad and asked him where he found the dog. And sure enough, someone was looking for a dog that looks exactly like him. So a dog that he thought had no home because he had no collar, somebody was looking for him. And by the way, he was he's a great guy. He would have given the dog an amazing home. He was about to. He just couldn't find the owner. So sometimes it just takes a little bit extra work. And I guess I had nothing to do that day and I was excited to do that. And when he returned the dog, they were so happy. They brought the whole family. They were crying, everything, which... Also guys, I should note, if you find a bird, do everything you can, including these steps, to find the owner. Next door app, Craigslist, Parrots 911, keep looking. Don't say nobody contacted me. I know birds are amazing, but they're like little children and you're taking their life away by you know not returning the bird. And by the way, if you do fall in love with a bird, I'm sure the owner would be happy to get you another bird or you can also find another bird yourself that needs a home. So wouldn't that be wonderful? So guys, um, I hope all of this helps. We've done the recap. You guys know what to do. Write down these notes if you have to. Um, I have many stories of where I found my birds in just different situations my whole life or found other people's birds. Um, I think all of these notes have 
been exactly what we have done to be successful. If you watch Storytime Sunday, you'll see what happened with Rocky and what moved that along quickly. In fact, it was the online stuff that helped us find him better than, you know, if we were running around all night. However, with that being said, if you watch the video, you'll note that had we went on all of the houses and knocked on all of those doors, like 10, 10, 10, and 10, like 40 homes, we also would have had some really good luck finding him. So that is my video for the day. I know it's so long. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for sticking with us. Because I was very happy today. Um, please subscribe. We love new subscribers. It really, really does keep me going. Um, it makes me know that there's so many of you that care about birds and their well-being. And I think that is absolutely amazing. And um, follow me on Instagram, at Marlene McCohen. And same with that Twitter, at Marlene McCohen. And anywhere else you guys want. Thank you guys. Bye.